of a pavilion in times of trouble. He's our refuge. Amen. He's the great rock in the weary land. He's the strong tower where the righteous run into it and they are safe. Amen. Salamat sa Panginoon pagkat meron tayong kublian in times of trouble. Now, uh, before you have your seats, open your Bible in Second uh, Corinthians chapter 2. Second Corinthians chapter two verse eleven. Lest Satan should get an advantage to of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. I'm reading from here because I'd like to take my title here. For we are not ignorant of his devices. So I'd like to. To uh, speak on the message, don't be ignorant of Satan's devices. Don't be ignorant of Satan's devices. Tayo sumandaling manalangin sa Panginoon. Lord Jesus, how wonderful it is to be in your presence, to fellowship together in your word. Thank you so much, Father. Because you have never failed to provide our spiritual needs. You're always here, Lord, to strengthen us, to nourish us, to make sure that we are spiritually healthy. You have never failed, Lord, to minister to us every time we gathered together. Lord, I pray that you would once again speak to us by your word. I pray that you would bless your people. I pray that you would uh, show us the things, Lord, that we need for us to have a life that is victorious. Because we know, Lord, that we are born to overcome in this age. And the promises are for those who overcomes. And we pray, Father, for your divine leading as we study your word. Bless your word. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. <clears throat> so we read from uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 2. Actually, uh, if you would read uh, or if you would read the context here, I pagat sa unang uh, epistle ni Apostle Paul sa Corinthians, I nabanggit doon ang isang kapatid sa iglesia na nagkukumit ng incest. incest Okay, having his father's wife, but the church is tolerating and doing nothing. So, nirebuke sila ni Paul, your glorying is not good, you know, that thing must be disciplined. Uh, so, uh, sa madaling salita, that brother was disciplined by the church at Corinth. At uh, pagdating sa kanyang writing, uh, dito sa 2 Corinthians, pagka nabalita na ni Apostle Paul na yung tao na kanilang dinisiplina ay uh, meron ng true repentance, he was chastised of God. So sa inutusan niya ngayon, ang mga Corinthian believers na patawarin niyo na siya. At puntahan niyo siya, encourage him, at para siya ay uh, makabalik sa iglesia, at uh, you you affirm your love for him. Pagka 
At sabi niya dito sa verse 11, lest Satan should get an advantage of us. Kasi kung mayroong unforgiving spirit, it is not good uh, for the church. And also, nakapag yung isang tao ay nagsisi na, pero hindi niya madama yung uh, affirmation ng love ng kanyang mga kapatid ay baka ma-overwhelm siya ng kalungkutan. At uh, ayun ay maghinder sa kanya na tuluyang makapag, makapanumbalik sa Panginoon. Pagkat alam natin, ang purpose ng church discipline is actually to restore ang, kap- ang, uh, ang isang kapatid spiritually. Kasi once a person is disciplined, ay alam din natin na ang Diyos, kung ayan ay anak, the Lord will uh, deal with that person personally. At uh, ang mga anak ng Diyos ay pinapalo ng Ama. At once na sila ay uh, pinapalo ng Ama, that is for the purpose to bring them back to the Lord, to turn them back to the Lord. At kapag nandun na yung true repentance, ay uh, magkakaroon ng full restoration. Kaya nakita natin na uh, church discipline is not to cut off the person, but actually it's part of the restoration process ng isang tao. Pagkat ang isang anak ng Diyos na nalayo, nais niyang maibalik sa kanya. So, sinasabi ni Paul dito, lest Satan should get an advantage of us. Kasi kung hindi natin alam ang ating gagawin, Satan could always take advantage of us. Because of lack of wisdom, lack of knowledge, lack of revelation, anong nangyayari? Satan could take advantage of that ignorance. At sabi ni Paul dito, lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Kaya napakahalaga yan, ano? Okay? We should not be ignorant of Satan's devices. Those are his tactics, his strategies, because we are in a warfare. Tayo ay nakikibaka. At si Satan na ating kaaway ay meron siya mga devices, stratagems, or tactics na ginagamit, schemes. At uh, if we are ignorant of his devices, that means na uh, madadaig niya tayo. Pagkat na tinuruan tayo ng prophet, how shall we overcome? To overcome means to know your enemy and to know all his schemes. Okay? Hindi ka magtatagumpay kung hindi mo makilalang yung kaaway. At hindi mo alam ang kanyang pamamaraan. Ang kanyang mga strategies. So for us to be able to overcome, we have to know the tactics of the devil. And we have to be sure who our enemy is. Kaya kinakailangan ng discerning of spirits. Pagkat kung minsan ang kaaway ay nagbabalat kayo. Sabi nga sa Bible, si Satan, okay, yung kanyang mga ministers, tinatransform niya as an angel of light. Di ba? Na mga parang mga ministers of righteousness, nagkukunwari, nagbabalat kayo. So we need discernment of his spirit so we would know that it's already the enemy on the move. Kasi kung hindi natin madiscern, kay Satan could take advantage of us. Kaya napakaraming mga Christians, Satan is taking advantage of them because of their ignorance, because of lack of discernment, because of lack of knowledge of Satan's devices. Pero nais ng Panginoon, that we would live a victorious life. Kaya ini-expose niya ang pamamaraan ng kaaway, ang galawan ng kaaway, because the Lord wants us to be victorious. And I believe that Jesus Christ is our captain of the host. At dahil siya ating captain of the host, nire-reveal niya sa atin ang strategies na kinakailangan natin para tayo'y magtagumpay. At ini-expose niya ang kaaway sa atin. And one way, 
for our captain of the host to do this is through the preaching of the word. Pagkat sa magitan ng pangaral ng salita ng Panginoon ay na-expose ang kaaway. Uh, sabi nga ng prophet, do you know why Satan is howling? Because he has been exposed. His schemes are exposed. Because Satan hated, hates to be exposed. Amen. But the revealing of the word exposes Satan. Because the revealing of the word, okay, ayan ay pamamaraan ng Panginoon para tayo'y magtagumpay. Now, I'd like you to uh, open your Bible dito sa Matthew 13 uh, to establish a thought. I know that you are uh, familiar with this parable. It's about the parable of the wheat and the tares. Dito sa Matthew 13, verse 24. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in the field. So mayroong sower dito. Okay, that sowed good seed in the field. And the sower is no other than the Son of Man, Jesus Christ. At sabi sa verse 25, And while man slept, his enemy came and sowed tears among the wheat and went his way. Now look at this because the Bible is showing you the strategy of the enemy. Ang sabi dyan, while man slept, that was the time that the enemy moved on. Are you catching that? While man slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. In other words, the enemy came in unsuspectedly. Okay? Hindi nila namamalaya na mga servants pumasok na yung kaaway at naghisik ng ibang binhi. In other words, he came in when he caught the people asleep. When they were unconscious and not watching for him. Pagkat, pag sinabing asleep, that is an unconscious state of mind. Ang isang taong tulog, hindi niya alam ang nangyayari sa kanyang kapaligiran. Diba? Umisa meron nang dumaang ipi sa kanyang uluhan, hindi niya namamalayan. Why? Because the person is asleep. Okay. So, I'm showing you here, one of the schemes of the devil. He knows when to move. Meron siyang timing. Alam niya kung ano ang right time na siya kikilos to infiltrate the people of God or the church of God. But while man is slept, his enemy came in and sowed tears among the wheat and went his way. And when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tears also. So nang uh, sumibol na yung wheat, okay, umusbong na rin yung tears. Verse 27, So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, this not thou so good seed in thy field? From whence then hath it tears? Now, look at this. Look at this. You mga servants of the householder, they didn't know that the enemy had come in. Nobody knew when the seed was sown. Why? Pagkat yung enemy he move he move in when man was asleep, iba. Kaya nang na-realize ng mga servants na mayroong tears na tumutubo, sabi nila, hindi ba't mga wheat lang ang aming tinanim? Bakit meron ngayong tears sa field? Ibig sabihin, hindi nila, hindi sila aware ng pumasok yung kaaway at naghasik ng binhi. When the enemy sleep in, they were unaware. They didn't even know the time when the enemy planted the tears. 
Pagkat ang kaaway ay kumilos when men were asleep. Now, so the enemy sleep in there when they were unaware and did great damage. At tandaan nyo mga kapatid, it could, it could only happen when men slept. Now, how many times that Satan put the people of God to sleep? How many times Satan put the people to sleep? In other words, he gets them in an unconscious state of mind so he could work quickly, effectively, and destructively. Now, I'm talking here spiritually. Are you catching that? Okay, Satan want to desensitize the people. Satan want to put the people in an unconscious state of mind. He want to put them asleep. Because while, while they were sleeping, he could do something that would do great damage. Now, that is one of the strategy of the enemy. And we have to be aware of that. Now, tingnan natin ang sinabi ni Peter dito sa uh, sa 1 Peter chapter 5. First Peter chapter 5 Verse 8. Sabi dyan, Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil. Now, we are talking here about the enemy. And we read about this enemy in the book of Matthew. Okay, how he slept in when men were slept. Okay. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil... As a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. So Satan is like a roaring lion. Shay gumagala. Okay? He was seeking whom he may devour. The word used here is devour because he was likened to a roaring lion. In other words, Satan seek to destroy. Satan seek to ruin. Satan seek to devour. Kaya. The Bible is teaching us, sabi to be sober, be vigilant. Now, tinan nga natin ang, uh, ang meaning ng sober. I think I placed it there. Okay. Pag sinabing be sober, to be calm and collected in spirit. Ang isang taong lasing, Okay, hindi na siya sober, di ba? Because the alcohol uh, makes his senses dull, di ba? Wala na siyang tamang balanse, wala na siyang tamang uh, uh, pag-iisip, di ba? Pag siya ilalakad sa straight line, hindi na straight, gumigewang-gewang na siya. Okay? So, pero dice ng Panginoon that we have to be sober. Okay. In other words, to be calm and collected in the spirit, to be temperate, dispassionate, and circumspect. Pag sinabing circumspect, you are prudent. You are very careful. Nang ibig sabihin, you are taking into consideration the consequences and the circumstances before you make an action. Yeah. Nag-iisip ka masyado. You are sober. So, sinabi nito, be sober at sabi dyan, be vigilant. Okay, vigilant means to watch. Okay, metaphorically, give a strict attention to. Be cautious, active to take heed, lest through remission of indolence, that's slothfulness, some destructive calamity suddenly overtake one. So pag sinabing vigilant, you are watchful. Alert ka. Pinagmamasdan mo. 
Nag-ibig sabihin, hindi ka masingitan ng kaaway. Why? Because you are watchful. You could discern the spirit. You could know when the devil is moving. Bagamat nakamaskara ang kaaway, madidiscern mo, well, who is beyond the mask? Why? Because you are alert. You are vigilant. You are so, uh, sober. Observer ka. You're very observant. You're very watchful. So sabi dyan, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a rolling lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Bakit maraming nasisilay ng kahaway? Because they were not sober. They were not vigilant. Sometimes they were relaxed. Di ba? Hindi sila aware sa pamamaraan ng kaaway. Kumikilos ng kaaway sa kanilang pamilya, hindi nila nadidetect. Kumikilos ng kaaway sa kanilang sarili, hindi nila namamalayan. Pumapasok ng uh, kaaway sa iglesia, hindi nila napapansin. Why? Because they are not sober, they are not vigilant. Pero nice ng Panginoon, we have to be sober, we have to be vigilant. Amen. Nice ng Panginoon na alert po tayo pagkat nandito po tayo sa digman. We are in a great spiritual warfare. Sabi nga ng prophet, we are not in a picnic but we are in a battle. At sa digman, mga kapatid, kinakailangan alert ka. You've got to be watchful. Why? Pagkat ang enemy, meron siyang plano against you. Ang enemy, mga kapatid, meron siyang mga devices, meron siyang mga pamamaraan. At na kung hindi ka maingat, maiisahan ka niya. Now, so I'd like you to, uh, to bear those words in mind. Sober and vigilant. Verse 9, Whom resist is steadfast in the faith. Now take note of those three words. Pagkat ito'y kinakailangan natin because these are strategies na tinuturo sa atin ng Panginoon. Okay? We need soberness, vigilance, and resistance. Sabi dyan, be sober, be vigilant, at sa verse 3, resist. Diba? Kinakailangan alam natin, i-resist ang kaaway. Huwag mo nang entertain yung kaaway. Amen. Amen. Kapag na-discern mo na siya, kaaway yan mga patid, i-resist mo na. Kontrahin mo na agad. Palayasin mo na agad. Whom resist is steadfast in faith, knowing that the same affliction are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Okay. Merong measure of sufferings. Sa bawat brethren, we are still in this world. Diba? At nais ng Panginoon, we have to be sober, we have to be vigilant, and we have to resist the devil steadfast in the faith. Verse 10, But the God of all grace, who had called us unto His eternal glory by Jesus Christ. I like this. The Lord has called us unto His eternal glory. And we are now in the age of glorification. After that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. Lahat po tayo merong measure of suffering na inalat po sa atin. Amen. But that suffering is to make you perfect. In other words, it's to make you complete. Establish, strengthen, settle you. Kaya salamat sa suffering na yan. That is a blessing in this guys. Amen. When the Lord is sending suffering in our life, that is for His good pleasure. May magandang layunin ang Panginoon sa bagay na yan. Sabi ng prophet, character is not made without suffering. Saraf, uh, suffering is to make you complete. To make you perfect. Amen. Para yung mga kakulangan sa iyo, what is lacking in your faith, what is lacking in your character, amen, ay makompleto. Why? Pagka through suffering, namumold yung character mo. Through suffering, mga kabatid, yung character ni Christ ay lumalabas sa atin. Through suffering, mga kabatid, namumold, form yung character ni Christo sa atin. 
to make you perfect and established. Tulad ng sinabi ni Brother Burnham sa isang punong kahoy. Amen. Kapag na, 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 kapag nagbo-blow yung malakas na hangin dyan at naaalog yung punong kahoy, lumalalim lamang ang kanyang ugat. Mas na lalo siyang nagiging establish. Dumating man ang bagyo sa buhay natin, mga kapatid, naaalog tayo. Pero sa pamagitan ng mga bagyong yun, lumalalim ang ating ugat. Hallelujah! The more we become stable, kaya kapag dumating ang panibagong pagsubok, ha, amen, stable na tayo. Why? Pagkat malalim na tayo, hindi na tayo pwedeng bunutin sa posisyon na pinaglagyan sa atin ng Panginoon. So that's the purpose. Make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. Now, Let's turn our Bible in Romans 13. Verse 11. Romans 13, verse 11. And that knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. Knowing the time. Do you know your time? Okay, you must understand your season. You must understand the time. Knowing the time that it is now high time to awake out of sleep. Pag sinabing to awake, to awake is to become conscious. Why? Because the enemy can move freely when men are asleep. Kapag isang tao ay unconscious, he men dyan kumikilos ang kaaway. So it's high time for us to awake out of his sleep. Uh, look at this because Paul here is uh, is talking is spiritual. Okay? To awake out of his sleep for now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. Now, verse 12. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. <laughs> yes, you, you must understand the time. The night is far spent. We saw the dawning of the day. Nakita natin yung morning star. He meant introducing the great light, the sun. Kaya nakita natin yung morning star. Inannounce sa atin, Shalom! At nangaral ng prophet, it is the rising of the sun. Now the night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let, let us put on the armor of light. Amen. The night is far spent. We saw the dawning of the day, we see the rising of the sun. At nakita natin, let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. Lahat ng gawa ng kadiliman, itakwil natin yan. Tanggalin natin sa ating buhay. And let us put on the armor of light. Why? Because you are not the children of darkness. You are the children of light. The, your father is light. So are you. Because you are as your father. Amen. Kaya mga kapatid, as the children of light, we have to put out, you put out all the works of darkness. We have to cast out all the work of darkness. 
Lahat ng mga kaawan ang gawa ng laman. Ha? Gawa ng kaaway. Impluensya ng kaaway. Amen. Kinakailangan tanggalin natin sa ating buhay. Why? Because we are the children of light. Tandaan natin, light could not fellowship with darkness. They are two different things. Now, we have, an, we have to put on the armor of light. At sabi sa verse 13, Let us walk honestly as in the day. Why? Because you are not the children of the night, you are the children of the day. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, and in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying. Why? Because these are works of darkness that we have to cast off. But verse 14, But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. Sabi kanina, put on the armor of light. Ngayon sabi kayo ni Paul, put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because the armor of light is Jesus Christ Himself. This is the time to apply the token. This is the time to display the token. We have to put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the last thereof. Brothers and sisters, this is now the perfection time. We know our time. We know our age. We know our season. This is not time to play church. We are moving to perfection. We are moving to maturity. Hallelujah. Ang sabi nito, we should not make provision for the flesh to fulfill the last of Why? Because we have to keep our garments undefiled. We have to keep the temple of God undefiled. We've got to refuse to be defiled. Why? Because this is the season of perfection. This is the season of consecration. This is the season of devotion. Wag natin pagbibigyan ng laman na ito, mga kamatid. Don't make provision for the flesh. If that sin wants to commit sin, if that flesh wanted to commit sin, if that flesh wanted to do evil, wag natin pagbibigyan. Hallelujah. Amen. Let this flesh be put subject to the will of the Spirit. Mortify the deeds of the flesh. The works of the flesh. Mortify the works of the flesh. Now look at this now. Sabi kanina, we have to cast off the works of darkness. At sinasabi ito, make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Hallelujah. Huwag nating pakainin itong flesh ng karnal na bagay. Why? Pagkat kapag pinapakain mo itong black dog, lumalakas. Hallelujah! Amen! Make no provision for that flesh. Nang ibig sabihin, huwag mong bigyan ng puwang ang kaaway sa buhay mo. Why? Because we have to put this flesh subject to the will of the Spirit. Why? Because the flesh and the Spirit, they are contrary one to another. Amen. But I believe that the spirit inside of you is greater than the flesh. Amen. Amen. Know ye not, mga batid, that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world? Yes, that flesh meron niyang kahinahan. Pero sinasabi ko, mas malakas ang Espiritu Santo ng Panginoon. Kaya nga sabi ko sa inyo, mga batid, Though we are in a grace dispensation, hindi ibig sabihin yan, mga batid, ay gagawin mo na ang gusto mong gawin. No! Shall we continue to sin that grace may abound? The Lord forbid. Why? Because under the grace dispensation, nang namatay yung kordero, amen, yung buhay na nandoon sa alay, pumasok sa mga believers. At yung buhay na yon, that's the life of an overcomer. Hallelujah! Kaya sa, is, nandito sa atin mga batid is a life of an overcomer. Yung buhay na yan, He already overcome the world. He was tempted at all points yet without sin. 
At salamat sa Panginoon dahil kung namatay lamang siya sa krus ng Kalbaryo para patawarin ang ating kasalanan, hindi pa rin tayo magiging overcomer pagkat hindi natin kaya sa ating sarili. Especially nowadays that this world is in gross darkness. Grabe ng kasamaan ngayon. Kung sa ating kalakasan hindi natin kaya, pero salamat sa Panginoon sa pamagitan ng Kanyang grasya. Amen. Yung buhay na nandoon sa alay, pumasok sa believer. Pagkat alam ng Panginoon na kailangan natin ng Kanyang kalakasan for us to win this battle. We could not finish this race without the Spirit of God. We could not face all the challenges in this life kung walang Espiritu Santo ng Panginoon because it's not by might nor by power but by the Spirit, saith the Lord. It's not Him that will it nor Him that run it but it is the Spirit that give it life. The flesh profited nothing but the Spirit give it life. Thank God. Not Him that run it, or not Him that will it, but it is God that shows mercy. Now, and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Why? Because if you make provision for that flesh, okay, that flesh will fulfill the last thereof. Mga kapatid, nang dayo'y binago ng Diyos, sin has no more dominion over us. Nakukuha nyo? Nang ikaw pa ay nasa salibutan, before your new birth, sin is your master. Kaya kung, uh, kung anong sinabi niya, susunod ka. Tama ba? Nagkaroon lamang ng war. Now, kailan nagkaroon ng war? Okay. Tandaan natin na ang Israelites, uminom, uminom, uminom sila doon sa Smitten Rock. Doon nagkaroon ng first war sa kanila, di ba? Yung mga Amalekites. Wala naman silang provocation, pero <laughs> yung mga Amalekites sought to destroy them. Why? Because that is the type. Because the Smitten Rock is Jesus. He was smitten at Calvary. And when that smitten, uh, uh, smitten sacrifice at Calvary, or, or when that rock was smitten, lumabas yung tubig. When Jesus Christ was smitten at Calvary, Amen, lumabas yung Holy Ghost. And that Holy Ghost is to dwell in the believers. At nang natanggap mo ng Holy Ghost, When you drunk from that smitten rock, doon nagkaroon ng war. Ang Israelite, wala silang war sa Egypt. Pagkat sunod-sunod lang sila sa mga Egyptian, sa kanilang mga taskmaster, kung anong sinabi, sunod-sunod sila, wala silang magawa. Pero when they drunk from that smitten rock, and that smitten rock is Jesus at Calvary, mga batid, nagsimula ang kanilang war. Kaya kailan nagsimura ang ating war? When you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, amen, the war is started because the Spirit is contrary to the flesh. Meron na ngayon, mga kapatid, lumalaban sa kalooban ng laman. At ayan ang Espiritu Santo. Now, let's uh, read from the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 5. Verse 11. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. Sabi nga kanina sa binasa natin sa Romans, you have to cast off the works of darkness. At sinasabi ni Paul dito sa kanyang writing sa Ephesians, we have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. Why? Because it takes like with like to fellowship. It takes two of the same nature to fellowship. Kaya nga sabi na birds of the same feather flock together. Diba? 
Kung sinasabi sa'yo ng, uh, ng, uh, ng crow, kainin mo yung mga bagay na ito na madudumi. Hindi mo kaya kainin. Sasabi mo sa crow, hindi ako crow, dab ako. Wala akong gal. I could not partake such things. Tama ba? Kapag yung vulture nilapitan ka at sabi niya, halika, makisalo ka dito. I am a eating a dead, rotten carcass. Sasabihin mo, I'm sorry, I could not fellowship with you. Ako'y agila. Ang aking kinakain ay sariwang pagkain. I don't want to feed on the old, rotten carcass. Magkaiba tayong na nature. I could not fellowship with you. Why? Because fellowship is like with like. That's why light could not fellowship with darkness. Are you catching that? Why? Because it takes two of the same nature to fellowship. Kaya mga kapatid, for you to have fellowship with God, God has to place His own nature inside of you. Why? Because fellowship is two nature... Uh, it takes two of the same nature to fellowship. So have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Pag sinabing reprove, that it means to expose them. Salamat sa Panginoon, mga kapatid. The revelation of the Word of God exposed the works of darkness. May ini-expose niya para makita natin. At sabi sa verse 12, For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. Kahiyahiyang pag-usapan yung mga bagay na ginagawa ng tao sa sikreto. Diba? But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever that make manifest is light. Pero salamat. Dahil sa liwanag, na-expose lahat. Kung walang ilaw ngayon sa building na ito, hindi natin alam ang nangyayari sa loob. Sa, sa loob. Hindi natin alam kung anong andito. Hindi natin alam kung may mga insekto, kung may mga uh, nakapasok na mga hayop dito. Hindi natin alam. Pero kapag binuksan mo yung ilaw, Amen. It would manifest what is inside this building. Because light exposes. At dahil merong liwanag sa iglesyang ito, na-expose ang kaaway. Na-expose ang mga gawain ng kaaway. Amen. Kaya si Satan ngayon, he is howling. Why? Because he has been exposed. Because Satan hates to be exposed. But the revelation of this word exposes the devil. Hallelujah! Ini-expose natin siya dito. Kaya alam natin ang gawain ng kaaway. Alam natin ang pamamaraan ng kaaway. We are not ignorant of the devices of the enemy. Because you could never overcome if you are ignorant of his devices. Pero salamat sa Panginoon. Nandito ang wisdom ng Diyos. Tinuturuan niya tayo. Ini-expose niya ang masasamang mga bagay. Pinapakita niya sa atin ang dapat nating gawin. You have to be sober. You have to be vigilant. You have to be able to resist the devil. Huwag ka lang dyan tumayo. Binigyan ka ng Panginoon ng sword para labanan ang kaaway. Ang iyong uh, armor, hindi lamang meron kang helmet, meron kang breastplate of salvation, meron kang shield. Yung mga yun for defense yun. Pero meron ka rin para sa offense. Meron kang sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And that's how Jesus defeated Satan. Ginamit niya yung salita. It is written. Nang ibig sabihin mga kapatid. Amen. If you have revelation, you could defeat the devil. Why? Because the sword of the Spirit is the Word of God. Marami mga tao, Satan, even try to manipulate them because of ignorance, because of lack of revelation. Pero kung meron kang revelation na didiscern mo ang kawa ng kaaway, kaya niririsist mo na mga kabatid, binubunot mo yung sandata and you use that revelation to defeat the enemy. 
Kaya salamat sa Panginoon, mga kapatid. We have the greatest revelation. Why? Because the light of this age is the greatest light. It is a greater light than any light of the past ages. Why? Because the Lord has given us the fullness of the word. Amen. Grabe ang deception ngayon. Maraming mga nanadaya. Napakaraming instrumento na ginagamit ng kahaway. Pero ang Diyos, ang liwanag, hindi nakulang na expose sa atin ang gawa ng kahaway. And the Lord is exposing that for a purpose. What is the purpose of God? For exposing the devices of the enemy. Because God wants you to be an overcomer. God wants you to be victorious. Amen. Hindi nandito ka sa minsay, pero talunan ka. Hindi mga kapatid. This message is to make you victorious. This message is to make you a Christian with a, with a life of constant victory. Hindi victory this week, defeat next week. Katapos victory again. Hindi mga kapatid. This message will give you constant victory. Victory after victory after victory. Amen. We have to be able to discern the move of the enemy. Now, verse 14. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest. Why? Pagkat sinasabi ko sa inyo, I showed you in the book of Matthew, while men who slept, the enemies came in. At sinasabi dito ni Paul sa Ephesians, Awake thou that sleepest. Marami mga tao, they are in an unconscious state of mind. Pero nice na Panginoon maging conscious tayo. Nice na Panginoon, we have to recognize Jesus and His program. At makita natin ang kawa ng kaaway. Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Now, hindi literal na ang tiyutukoy ni Apostle Paul dito, no? Okay? This is a spiritual sleep. Ako niyo mga kapatid? Kasi merong outer man, merong inner man. Hindi ba itong outer man nauuhaw? Nagugutom? Kung paano nagugutom itong outer man, nauuhaw, ganun din naman sa inner man. Di ba? Sabi ito, Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Di ba? So, mayroong spiritual hunger, mayroong spiritual thirst. Why? Pagkat itong laman na ito, pag nagutom yan, mayroon siyang natural food. Di ba? At yung spiritual man, kapag nagutom, utom meron din siya kinakain. Anong sabi ni Christ? Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Bakit you will not live by bread alone? Because you are a twofold being. Hindi ka lamang physical man, meron kang inner man, meron spirit man inside of you. Kung itong na physical man, outer man, kailangan niya ng natural bread, pinapakain mo para malakas, yung inner man, kinakailangan niya rin ng tinapay, pero ibang klaseng tinapay. Amen. Tinapay ng buhay, ang salita ng Panginoon. Kaya tayo dumadalo sa mga services pagkat alam natin kung paano natin pinapakain ng laman na ito para malakas, kinakailangan na pakainin yung inner man at ang pagkain niya ay ang salita ng Diyos. Hallelujah! Purong salita ng Panginoon. Ang pagkain yan. Now, let's continue. Awake thou that sleepest and arise from the dead. This is a spiritual resurrection. And Christ shall give delight. 
See then that ye walk circumspectly. Now, this is the same word as soberly. Pinaliwanag ko kanina. Okay? Pag sinabing walk circumspectly, pag sikaw, you are cautiously or carefully. Diba? Sabi ko, a man that is cautious is taking into consideration all the circumstances, the, uh, the consequences before he make an action. So we have to walk circumspectly. Not as fools, but as wise. <laughs> we have to be wise. May mga foolish virgins, pero we are not foolish virgins. We have to behave as wise. That's why we have to walk circumspectly. We have to walk after the Spirit. We have to walk in the light. We have to walk worthy of the vocation wherewith God has called us. See then that He walks circumspectly, not as fool but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Why do you redeem the time? Because you understand your day. Ano bang day natin that they are evil, that these days are evil? Tama ba? At ang kasamaan ngayon ay higit sa kasamaan ng mga nakaraang ages. Mas grabe ang kasamaan ngayon pagkat na-discover na ng siyensya ang fourth dimension, yung communication, nandiyan ang internet and so forth. Madali niya nang ma-transmit ang field sa buong mundo. Diba? Pero sabi niya, redeeming the time. Why? These days are evil. If you understand your days, you must know how to redeem the time. Ibig sabihin, if days are evil, grabe ang hatak ng mundo. Grabe ang hatak ng kasamaan. So what do you do? You redeem the time. Pag sinabing redeem the time, ginagamit mo yung time mo sa makabuluhang bagay. Yung pagparito nyo ngayong gabi, you are redeeming the time because the days are evil. Kapag kayo pumupunta sa prayer meeting, you are redeeming the time baka doon kayo kumukuha ng lakas sa Panginoon. Kung kayo nagbabasa ng salita ng Panginoon, pinapakain yung inyong kaluluwa, you are redeeming the time because you are using your time sa mga bagay na makabuluhan. Why? Pagkat alam mo, sa panahon natin, kinakailangan mo na palakasin ang iyong sarili sa pamagitan ng salita ng Panginoon na ito ang panahon na magpakapuspus ka sa banal na Espiritu. Because the days are evil. Kung wala ang salita ng Panginoon, kung wala ang lakas na nagbuwa sa Espiritu Santo, madali tayong mahatak sa mga bagay sa mundong ito. Amen. But we know how to redeem the time. Nananalangin tayo, kumakain tayo ng salita ng Panginoon, dumadalo tayo sa mga services. That is one way to redeem the time. Because the days are evil. Kaya bagamat napakasama ang mundo, you're still having victory because you are redeeming the time. Amen. Bagamat malakas ang hatak at impluensya ng sanlibutan. Amen. Amen. Nakakaya na mo pa rin. Labanan ang impluensya ng mga yan. Why? Because you are redeeming the time. Because when you redeem the time, mga kabatid, nare-recharge ang iyong spiritual strength. Amen. Lumalakas ka. Hallelujah. Amen. Nare-renew ka. Binibigyan ka ng Panginoon ng kapahayagan. We are redeeming the time. Amen. Ayaw natin aksayahin ang ating panahon sa mga hindi makabuluhang bagay pagkat alam natin may ikli lamang ang panahon. Maging si Satanas, alam niya na may ikli na lamang ang kanyang panahon. Kaya siya'y galit na galit ngayon. Kaya ang kaaway ay full blast ngayon. Di ba? Kung ang kaaway, alam niya yung kanyang time, malit ma, kunting panahon na lang. Amen. Kaya full blast sila. How much more tayo? Meron tayong revelation. We know that this is the age of the rapture. Ilang taon na lang, nagbibila lamang tayo at kukunin na tap ng Panginoon tayo sa lupang ito. This is now the time of preparation. This is now the time that the wife has made herself ready. 
We have to redeem the time. Amen. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Alam mo, sabi ng iba, masyado akong busy para manalangin. Dami kong ginagawa kaya hindi na ako makapanalangin. Alam niyo sabi ni Martin Luther, kung mas marami akong gagawin, mas maraming time na didudvote ko sa pananalangin. Why? Pagkat kung marami kang haharapin, mas kinakailangan mo ang kalakasan na nagmumula sa Diyos. Amen! Uh, sabi nga ni Brother Branham, si Susan Wesley, if I remember ito, meron siyang 17 children, 17 or 19 children. At sabi niya, noong unang panahon, wala pa silang mga dishwasher, wala pa silang washing machine. Would you imagine if you have 17 children? Kasi wala kang dish, di, uh, washing machine. Diba? Pero sabi niya, pero bagamat busy si Susan Wesley, meron pa rin siyang time na manalangin at turuan ng kanyang mga anak patungkol sa Diyos. No wonder why nagkaroon siya ng anak tulad ni John Wesley at Charles Wesley. John Wesley was the star messenger in Philadelphia. Si Charles Wesley, mga kapatid, he is a gospel songwriter. Why? Mga kapatid, huwag natin isipin na masyado na tayong busy para wala na tayong time sa Panginoon. Amen. Ito ang panahon that we have to redeem the time. Alam niyo kung bakit? Pagkat mautag ang kaaway, pag nakita niya marami kang extra time, kukunin niya yan sa mga bagay na hindi makabuluhan, sa entertainment, o sa mga bagay na, that, is not, <laughs> that is not of value. At kapag nakuha niya na, na-realize mo, pagod ka na. Yung dapat na magkaroon ka ng quality time sa pananalangin o pagpabasa ng sata ng Panginoon, wala na, pagod ka na. Kasi kahit meron kang extra time, kayang-kayang nakawin ng kaawayan sa mga bagay na hindi importante. Pero mga kapatid, you must know how to redeem your time. Because the days are evil. Amen. Verse 17. Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Oh my. Be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Kinakailangan maunawaan mo ang kalooban ng Diyos. At sa mga nakaraang pangangaral, nalaman natin that this is the will of God, even our sanctification. Amen. If you understand the will of God, may isa sa buhay mo ang kalooban ng Diyos. Dahil papaano mo lalakaran ang kalooban ng Diyos kung hindi mo alam ang kalooban ng Diyos. Kaya sa magitan ng pangangaral ng salita ng Diyos, ipinapakita niya sa atin ang kanyang kalooban. Amen. Pagkat kung malawan mo ang kalooban mo, Panginoon, ito palang nais mo sa buhay ko. Lord, not my will, but thy will be done. Amen. Na-realize ko na ako pala ay templo. Na-realize ko ako pala ay mga vessels. Amen. Chosen vessels that were designed specifically for master's use. At nice mo yung mga vessel na yun. Consecrated, sanctified, fit for master's use. At kapag nakita mo ang kalooban ng Diyos sa buhay mo, nice mong lakaran ang nais nice ng Panginoon sa buhay mo. Why? Pagkat ang tibok ng puso mo is not to please man, but to please your maker. To please God. Amen. You've got to understand the will of God. At salamat sa Panginoon, the Lord is making known to us His will. Now, now why, did I, why, did, why did I read those scriptures? Because I'm showing you the importance of being awake. Diba? Kaya sabi ni Paul, Awake thou that sleepest. It is a call to awakening. A call to come out of a slumbering state. 
It is a call to wake up and become sensitized to the hour, to what is happening. Because I'm showing you here the dangers of being asleep when there is an enemy planning for your destruction. Mga kapatid, merong danger kapag ikay tulog. Dahil merong kaaway na nagpaplano ng yung destruction. Catching that? When men were asleep, the enemy came in. Now, I'd like, I'd like to give you an example. Turn your Bible in the book of Judges. Judges 16. It's about Samson. Uh, we'll just read a portion of it. Pagkat alam ko, we are very familiar with the story of Samson. Judges 16, verse... Let's start with verse 4. And it came to pass afterward it came to pass afterward. Because before that, you could see the victories of Samson. Diba? How he killed the lion, how he slew a thousand Philistines just through a jawbone. Diba? How nang uh, siya'y kinulong doon sa Gaza, nang siya'y lumabas, he just picked up the doors of the gate Binunot niya lang, dinala niya. Do you see that? Do you realize the power resting on Samson? Now, this, this man, Samson, was born for a purpose. Before he was born, sinabi na ng angel sa magulang <laughs> that this uh, son that would be born would be a Nazarite from the womb and he would deliver the Israelites from the hand of the Philistines. Nang ibig sabihin, this man was born for a purpose. He was born to be a deliverer. Para ipaghiganti ang mga Israelites sa kamay ng mga Pilistino. So God has a purpose to, uh, uh, with this man. At sabi to, and it came to pass afterward that he loved a woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. Oh my. He loved a woman in the valley of Sorek. Now, ito pa lang, ha? mga kapatid, nagkamali na dito si Samson, pagkat si Delilah ay Philistine. Okay. And he loved a woman in the valley of Sorek whose name was Delilah. Verse 5. And the lords of the Philistines came up unto her and said unto her, Entice him. And see wherein his great strength lieth. And by what means we may prevail against him, that we may bind him and to afflict him. And we will give thee, every one of us, 1,100 pieces of silver. Oh my. Na in love itong si Samson sa isang babae sa Sorek whose name is Delilah. Now, itong mga Filistinos, uh, itong mga Philistines, nagkaroon na sila ng maraming encounter kay Samson. Alam nila na mayroong kakaibang lakas, kapangyarihan kay Samson. Di ba? Hinarap nila si Samson with a, with, with, a, with a big troop. 1,000 sila, pero pinatay lang ni Samson yung isang libo. They know that there is a supernatural power in Samson. At gusto nilang malaman kung bakit meron siyang ganong kalakasan. Now, I'm showing you this here because sabi dito, 
We have to be sober and vigilant. At nakita natin dito si Samson, he was not sober and he was not vigilant. Why do we need to be sober and vigilant? Because our adversary, the devil, is like a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour. And we could see here lion Philistines. They were seeking to devour Samson. Nilabanan na nila si Samson pero hindi talaga nila matalo si Samson. Di ba? Ang sabi ni Brother Balam, ito mga Pilistino, kapag naririnig nila ang pangalan ni Samson, they would tremble. They know that there is some dynamics in the life of Samson. Sabi ng mga Pilistino, <laughs> hindi na bali ang mechanics, ang worry namin yung dynamics. Kasi, kapag lumalaban doon si Samson, meron siyang kakaibang lakas. Mga kapatid, ang demonyo, alam niya, kung anong normal na kalakasan ng tao. At alam niya rin kung meron kang kakaibang kalakasan. At tandaan niyo, kapag ang kaaway, nilalabanan ka niya at hindi sila manalo, hindi sila mag-give up. Hindi na sabi, oh, ilang beses na tayo natalo. Merong supernatural strength yung taong yan. Lagi tayo natatalo. No, mag-give up na tayo. Hindi mga kapatid, ang kaaway nagpaplano. Let's change our strategy. Itong strategy na ito, hindi tayo hey, uh, uh, nagiging tagumpay sa strategy na ito. Let us change our strategy. Let us change our tactics. Si Samson, hindi mo pwedeng tapatan niya ng, uh, ng uh, arrow o sandata or spear. Sinubukan na natin yan. Talong-talo tayo. Pero tingnan natin, <laughs> nang nandun siya sa gasa, may pinuntahan siyang prostitute doon. Tingnan natin. Kasi magpapalit tayo ng strategy. At nakita nila na si Samson na in love kay Delilah. Ang sabi dito, He loved a woman in the valley of Sorek whose name was Delilah. Kaya yung mga lords of the Philistines, pinuntahan nila si Delilah. At sabi nila, Entice him and see wherein his great strength lieth. Entice him. Now, <laughs> itong mga taong ito, they know Delilah, she has certain moves. Di ba? Kasi alam, alam na mga Filistino nagkagusto si Samson sa kanya, di ba? Nagsinabi ng mga Filistino sa kanya, entice him. Hindi sumagot si Delilah, papalok siya entice, paano ba gawin yan? Virgin pa ako, hindi ko alam ang gagawin ko. No, mga kapatid, si Delilah, she knows the art of manipulation. Alam niya how to manipulate the spirit of men. Alam niya ang kanyang gagawin. Are you catching that? Pagka tinuturuan siya, entice him, entice mo siya. Diba? Entice him and see wherein his great strength lieth. And by, with, and by what means we may prevail against him that we may bind him to afflict him and we will give the every one of us 1,100 pieces of silver. Now mga kapatid, si Samson mahal niya si Delilah pero si Delilah mahal niya ang pera <laughs> kaysa kay Samson. Medyo nagbibiling na si Delilah. Isa sa kanila 1,100 pieces of silver. 1,100 is 1,100. Eh, 1, diba? Aba! Nasilaw si Delilah sa pera, parang si Judas yan. Kaya si, si Delilah, alam niya ang kanyang gagawin. Uh, tinitingnan niya na lang, ini-imagine na yung kanyang payday. Nako, habang natanggap ko yung perang ito, ilan ba sila? Nako, tiba-tiba ako. Diba? Now, and Delilah said to Samson, Tell me, I pray thee, wherein thy strength 
wherein, wherein thy great strength lieth, and wherewith thou mightest be bound to afflict thee? Now, I, wala akong boses babae, no? pero itong si Delilah, he was, as she was saying that, in enticing way. Kumbaga, uh, pinahiga niya muna, marahil minamasahin niya muna si Samson with his arm around the neck of Samson at habang uh, hinahaplos niya si Samson, sinasabi ni Delilah, Tell me, I pray thee, wherein thy great strength lieth. Ano bang source? Why? Tandaan niyo mga batid. Sabi ko nga sa inyo, alam ng kaaway kung gaano kalakas ang tao. Kaya kung merong supernatural strength sa isang tao at hindi nila magapi, alam din nila. Kaya ang gustong gawin ng kaaway is to disconnect you to that source of power. Is to disconnect you, mga kapatid, to the source of that strength. Gusto niyang i-unplug ka doon sa sakit. Kasi habang nakakabit ka doon sa sakit, hindi ka nila magapi. Kaya ang gagawin ng kaaway, they want to desensitize you. Kaya gusto ng kaaway, maging prayerless ka. Why? Pagkat naka-unplug ka. Gumagawa siya ng paraan. Why? Pagkat nakikita niya itong taong ito, alam ko maraming kahinaan, pero hindi naming magapi. Meron siyang supernatural strength. Ilang demonyo nang umatake sa kanya, pero nare-resist niya yung mga demonyo. Iba, ilang ilang temptation na ang din, binibigay namin sa kanya, pero nare-resist niya. Amen. Kinakailangan ma-unplug natin siya doon sa sakit. Kinakailangan natin siya ma-disconnect doon sa source, of, source ng kanyang strength. Pagkat hindi normal yan sa isang tao. Marami na tayong pinatumbang tao kayang-kaya natin. Yung isang tao, tatlong demonyo bumaksak agad sa kasalanan. Pero ito, isang libong demonyo kayang-kaya niya. At ang kaaway kapag natalo mo, hindi yan sumusuko. Amen. Amen. Nagpaplano siya. Amen. He is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Kaya nais ng Panginoon, we have to be sober. We have to be vigilant. At ito mga kapatid, pumapasok ng kaaway. Kumbaga, sa isang tupa, malapit na yung leon, hindi niya pa naaamoy. Yung set ng leon. At ito si Samson, hindi niya naaamoy. Yung kaaway. Meron na palang plano against him. Pero feeling niya, oh, he's under control. Oh, everything is all right. Pagkat yung babaeng gusto ko, oh, nakuha ko na, nakuha ko na siya, I got, I got her. Diba? Pero hindi niya alam, kumikilos ng kaaway. Now, And Delilah said to Samson, Tell me, I pray thee, wherein thy strength lieth, and wherein thou mightest be bound to afflict thee. And Samson said unto her, If they bind me with seven green weeds that were never dried, then shall I be weak and be as another man. Dito pa, ayaw pang i-reveal ni Samson yung, yung sikreto niya. Di ba? Okay. Sabi niya, oh, if they bind me with seven green weeds that were never dried, then I shall be weak and be as another man. Then the lords of the Philistines brought up to her seven green weeds which had not been dried and she bound him with them. Tinalian niya. Okay. Now there were with men lying in wait, abiding with her in the chamber. May nandun na yung mga kalalakihan, yung mga Philistine nagtatago na, pero hindi na didisern ni Samson. He was not sober. He was not vigilant. And she said unto him, The Philistine be upon thee, Samson. And he break the weeds as a tread of toys broken. 
And when it touched, when it touched the fire, so his strength was not known. Yung itinali sa kanya, napunit lang, parang nasulog ng apoy. Sabi dito. And Delilah said unto Samson, Behold, thou hast mocked me and told me lies. Now tell me, I pray thee, wherewith thou mightest be bound. O, oh, ikaw naman, nagsinungaling ka sa akin, di mo sinabi ang totoo. Sinabi mo yan kapag tinalian ka niyan, manghihina ka, tinalian kita. Gusto kong malaman kung truthful ka sa iyo sinasabi. Hindi naman. Napunit lang, naputol lang, na para bang dumapo sa apoy. Verse 11, And he said unto her, If they bind me fast with new ropes, that never were occupied, then shall I be weak and be as another man. Delilah therefore took new ropes and bound him therewith and said unto him, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And there were liars in wait abiding in the chamber. Look at this. Those lions were there. Already making ready to divorce Samson, but Samson had not discerned it. And he break them off his arms like a thread. Para lamang na pulit na parang sinulit or thread. And Delilah said unto Samson, Here do thou hast mocked me and told me lies. Tell me wherewith thou mightest be bound. And he said unto her, if thou weavest the seven locks of my head with the web. Medyo palapit-lapit na si Samson. Sabi niya, seven weeds. Ngayon, seven locks ng kanyang head. Palapit-lapit na siya doon sa, <laughs> sa source. Okay? Kung bakit siya malakas? Dahil sa kanyang Nazarite vow. Now, And she fastened it with the pin and said unto him, the Philistine be upon thee, Samson. And he awaked out of his sleep and went away with the pin of the beam and with the web. And she said unto him, How canst thou say I love thee when thine heart is not with me? Thou hast mocked me these three times and hast not told me therewith thy strength lieth. Paano mo magagawa yan sa akin, Samson? Sinasabi mo na mahal mo ako. Pinaglutuan pa kita ng masarap na almusal kanina. Katapos sabi ko sa iyo, mahal mo ba ako, Samson, talaga? Oo, mahal na mahal kita. Pero tatlong beses ka nang nagsinungaling. Hindi mo sinasabi yung totoo sa akin. Now look at this woman. He was used by the enemy. <laughs> Samson could resist a lion. He could resist a thousand Philistines. But he could not resist this woman. Nakuha niyo mga kabatid? Ang kaaway, pinakmamasdan niya kung saan lugar sa iyong buhay is left unguarded. Kung saan gate yung bukas na pwede siya makapag-infiltrate. Kung saan yung open. Kung hindi ka niya makuha sa isang bagay, pag-aaralan ka niya. Huwag niyong isipin mga kapatid, hindi pinag-aralan ng kaaway yung buhay natin. Pinag-aaralan niya tayo. Amen. Inaalam niya ang ating source of strength. Kapag nalaman niya ang source of strength niya, lagi ang nananalangin, lagi ang dumadalo sa church, ah, gagawa tayo ng paraan. Medyo dagdagan natin ang trabaho niya. Oo, oh, iintay sa natin ganito para wala na siyang time para dumalo sa church. Amen. Wala na siyang time na manalangin. Why? Pagkat ginagawa ng kaaway lahat ng pamamaraan. Amen. Para magapika. Hindi siya susuko. 
inaalam niya yung source of strength mo. Bakit malakas ito? Alam ko ang buhay niyo ng unbeliever. Madali ko itong pasunurin. Pero ngayon parang hirap ko siyang hatakin. Pinagmamasdan ka niya mga kapatid. Hallelujah. Amen. Pero mga kapatid, you have to be vigilant. Don't, le- don't leave a place in your life that is unguarded pagkat doon ang atake ang kaaway. Are you catching that? Now, sinasabi mo naman mahal mo ako pero hindi mo sinasabing totoo sa akin. Marahil siguro, hindi pinapansin ni Delilah si Samson. Bakit hindi mo ako pinapansin? Eh, ikaw naman eh. Sabi mo, mahal mo ako pero yung... Uh, Kasimpleng tanong ko lang, hindi mo masagot. Hindi mo sinasabi sa akin. Why? Pagkat ang nasa isip ni Delilah, kailangan kong malaman ito kasi may naghihintay sa akin malaking salapi. Now verse 16, And it came to pass when she pressed him daily with her words and urged him so that his soul was vexed unto death. Mga kapatid, ganyan ang kaaway. <laughs> Amen. Hindi ka makuha. Okay. He will press you daily. Hindi ba ganun ang ginawa kay Joseph nang inaakit ng asawa ni Potiphar at nakita niya nagre-resist si Do- Joseph inaraw-araw niya. Si Joseph, mga kapatid. Kaya kapag uh, ang kaaway, nakita niya nagre-resist mo siya, hindi yan mag-give up. Very consistent yan hanggang sa sumuko ka. Pero sinasabi ko sa inyo mga kapatid, huwag kayong sumuko. Tandaan niyo yung tatlong word na yon, Be sober, be vigilant, and resist. You have to resist the devil. Now, when she pressed him daily with her words and urged him so that his soul was vexed unto death, and he told her all his heart, and said unto her, There hath not come a razor upon mine head, for I have been a Nazarite unto God from my mother's womb. Oh my, the secret na merong lakas si Samson, he did not break his Nazarite vow. He was keeping his Nazarite vow. Or his Nazarite sheep, should I say. Okay? Because he was born Nazarite. Okay. For I have been a, a Nazarite unto God from, uh, from my mother's womb. If I be shaven, then my strength will go from me. I shall become weak and be like any other man. Verse 18. And when Delilah saw that he, he had told her all his heart, he sent and called for the lords of the Philistines, saying, Come up this once. For he had shown me all his heart. Then the lords of the Philistines came up unto her and brought money in their hand. Nandun na yung pera na kanilang pinangako. At anong sabi ito? And she made him sleep upon her knees. Anong sabi kanina sa Matthew? When men is left, the enemy came in. And that's why the enemy wants to desensitize us. The enemy wants you to be prayerless. Kumbinsan masyado ka ng abala sa mga cares of this life, that is one way that the enemy is desensitizing you. Do you see that? Kasi once, nasa state ka na ng slumberness, or na, nandun ka na sa unconscious state of mind, hindi ka na aware. Hindi mo na nadidesire ng kaaway. Kumikilis yung kaaway mo, ang aisip mo lang, or I'm just enjoying myself, I'm just having pleasure, I'm just, I'm just having this or that. Pero hindi mo alam, mga kapatid, while you are sleeping, amen, there's a danger of it because the enemy is planning for your destruction. Kaya sabi na possible, awake! Thou that sleepeth. Amen. Kinakailangan, you have to be sober. You have to be vigilant because your adversary, the devil is like a roaring lion 
gumagala siya dyan, seeking whom he may devour. Amen. Si Samson hindi niya alam, marami na palang liyon na nandoon sa bahay nakapaligot, nagta, nagtatago, to my timing lang mga kabatid. Hinihintay nilang patulugin ni Delilah si Samson. At nang si Samson ay nandoon na sa unconscious state of mind that was not at the time. Amen. That they have to do distraction. Anong ginawa dito? And she made him sleep upon her knees. And she called for a man. And she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head. And she began to afflict him. And his strength went from him. Now, hindi mawuputol yung seven locks na buhok ni Samson kung gising siya. Kinakailangan mula siyang patulugin ni Delilah. Hindi pa payag mismo si Samson pagkat alam niya yung value ng buhok na yun. Pagkat that is connected with his Nazarite ship. Are you catching that? Pero anong ginawa ni Delilah? Dinesensitize siya. Pinatulog siya. <laughs> Pinatulog siya sa kanyang knees. Oh, maray hinahaplus-haplus siya. Nilalang minamasage-masage yung ulo niya hanggang nakatulog na mahimbing si Samson. At nang nakita ni Delilah na unconscious na si Samson. Amen. Natulog na si Samson. ano ginawa niya? Tumawag siya ng lalaki para putulin yung kanyang buhok. Maray lang pinutol yung isang lak. Sabi, sabi ng lalaki, okay na ba yan? Hindi. Sabi niya, kinakailangan pito. Naka, nakadalawa na tatlo. Naninerbius na yung... Baka magising na yan. Delikado. Hindi, tapusin mo. Kinakailangan maputo lahat yung seven lakhs. Do you see that? That is the importance of being sober. That is the importance of being alert, vigilant. Kasi kung minsan napapasukan na tayo ng kaaway, hindi tayo aware. Kung minsan, ninanakaw na yung oras natin na hindi makabulo ang bagay ng entertainment, hindi natin alam. Kaya, paggabi na, pagod na tayo, wala na tayong time na manalangin. We are already desensitized by the devil. Amen. Pero ito mga kabatid, anong ginawa kay Samson? Pinutol yung seven locks of his head. Now verse 20, And she said, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awoke out of his sleep and said, I will go out as at other times before and shake myself. Samson was living in his memory. Ang kanyang memory, oh, matagumpay ako. Ang kanyang, naalala niya yung mga victory niya. Mga batid, hindi ibig sabihin may mga victory ka sa past. Ay meron ka rin victory ngayon. Hindi mga batid. Kung hindi ka conscious, kung hindi ka alert, maiisahan ka ng kaaway. Ito si Samson, bumangon siya. Ang kanyang memory, malakas pa siya. Ang kanyang memory, nandun ang power ng Panginoon. But he did not realize the enemy was able to disconnect him from the source of the power. At sabi ito, And wish not that the Lord was departed from him. Hindi niya alam na yung kapangyarihan, yung Diyos, umalis na sa Kanya. Ang tanging dahilan kaya matugumpay si Samson is because of the Spirit of God. Hindi dahil sa kanyang kalakasan. So when the Lord departed from him, mga batid, Samson is like an ordinary man. Mga but if the power of God is resting upon you, you are not ordinary man. Even the demons would recognize that. Alam ng demonyo kapag ang isang tao, ha, amen, may supernatural power sa kanya. Nararamdaman nila. Amen. Hindi nila matalo yung, ka, yung, yung taong yun, mga batid. Alam ng demonyo kapag ang isang tao ay punong-puno ng panalangin. Alam ng demonyo if a person is living a consecrated life because there's a divine power resting on that person. Kaya ang demonyo, hindi siya takot kung marami kang knowledge sa message. Marahil magaling kang mag-quote, marami kang memory verse, hindi siya takot dyan. Ang takot ang demonyo kapag ang isang tao is living a consecrated life. Takot ang demonyo because the presence of God, the 
power of God is resting upon that person. Kaya anong gagawin ng kaaway? Gusto niyang sirain niyang consecration mo. Amen. Gusto ng gawin ng kaaway? I-defile ka. Why? Pagkat mga kapatid, na-realize ng kaaway, that is the source of your strength. Hallelujah. Hindi niya alam. He woke up. Akala niya malakas pa siya. Ang sabi to, he wished not. Ibig sabihin, he knew not that the Lord was departed from him. But the Philistine took him and put out his, uh, his eyes and brought him down to Gaza and bound him with fetters of brass. And he, had, uh, and he did grind in the prison house. Oh my, look at this Samson. He was hunted by the lion. He was devoured. That is Satan. Or I could say, he was hunted. He was snared. He was trapped. Why? Because he was not vigilant. He was not sober. He was snared. And he was captured. And he was caged. He was now in prison. Do you see that? Ganyan ang kaaway mga kapatid. Kaya mga kapatid, we have to redeem the time because the days are evil. Amen. Napakaraming bagay na ginagamit ng kaaway to desensitize the people. Kaya mga tao ngayon hindi na sensitive. Di ba? Hindi na nila alam na ang kaaway nakakilos na sa kanilang buhay, nakapasok na sa kanilang pamilya, o nakapasok na sa iglesia, hindi nila namamalayan because they are already asleep. They are already unconscious. Pero nais nice ng Panginoon, we always have consciousness. We, as we, are, we should always have a discernment of the Spirit. Alam mo kung ninanakaw na ng kaaway ang time mo sa mga hindi makabuluhang bagay, nadidiscern mo siya. Kaaway, alam kong ginagawa mo sa akin. Amen. Dinidistract mo na ako. Amen. Ninalakan, ninanakaw mo yung focus ko sa Panginoon. Pero hindi ako papayag. Akala mo maisan mo ako. Hindi. Pagkat ang aming captain of the host, he taught us to be sober, to be vigilant, and to resist his steadfast in faith. Hallelujah! We have to resist the devil. Now, I'd like to read a quote from the prophet. Ito patungkol sa Ephesian Church Age. Sabi niya dito, The very name Ephesus has a strange compound meaning. Aim at and relaxed. Okay, ang uh, Ephesus mayroon siyang compound meaning. Ang meaning niya is I aim at and relax. At sabi niya, the high aspiration of this age had begun with the fullness of the spirit, the depth of God. Aba, kasi aim at eh, mayroon silang high aspiration. Okay? The high aspiration of this age that had begun with the fullness of the Spirit, the depth of God, whereby they were aiming at the high calling of God, okay, began to give way to a less watchful attitude. Pero, aim at, pero naging relax sila. Sabi niyan, began to give way to a less watchful attitude. Ang ibig sabihin ng vigilant, watchful, alert. Pero nang nangyari sa kanila, medyo nag-relax sila. Okay? At sabi dyan, began to give way to a less watchful attitude. Hindi na sila masyadong vigilant. A less ardent following of Jesus Christ began to manifest itself as an omen that in the future ages, the, phys the physical vehicle called the church would sink to the awfulness of of the depth of Satan. From the depth of God to the depth of Satan. 
it had become relaxed and was drifting. Mga kapatid, kung relax ka sa iyong pamumuhay kristyano, relax ka sa iyong pananalangin, relax ka lang, okay lang, na hindi makadalo sa church, uh, kahit dalawang linggo, okay lang. Mga kapatid, delikado ka dyan. You are becoming less watchful. You are not sober, you are not vigilant. You don't know that is the source of your strength. Kapag ikay dumadalo sa, sa services, pinapalakas ka ng Panginoon. Pero sometimes pinababayaan mo. Okay lang, mag-absent lang ako ng isang beses. Yung isang beses na absent mo sa service, naging, naging madalas na. Amen. At mamaya, naging normal na na hindi dumalo sa service. Mga kapatid, amen. You become less watchful. Napabayaan mo ang iyong sarili, mga kapatid. Mamaya makikita mo, nakapasok ng kaaway sa iyo. Amen. Dati malakas ka, ngayon mahina ka na. Why? Amen. Because the devil, amen, was able to desensitize you, to put you in an unconscious state of mind. At anong ginawa niya? Pinutol na yung seven locks of, uh, of your hair, mga kapatid. Nang ibig sabihin, dinisconnect ka niya sa source ng iyong kalakasan. Pero nais ng Panginoon, mga kapatid, maging watchful tayo. Huwag natin pababayan ang ating Christian life. Kinakailangan alam natin ang source ng ating kalakasan. Huwag natin pababayan ang mga bagay na nagbibigay lakas sa atin. Amen. Pagamat sabi na kayo, huwag ka nang manalangin. Pagod ka na, manalangin ka pa rin. Pagkat satanas yan, demonyo yan. Amen. He wants you to be prayerless pagkat nakita niya, nakita niya, isa yan sa source ng kalakasan mo. Hallelujah. Na habang ang kamay ni Moses ay nakataas, si Joshua at ang army ng Israel, nagwawagi sila sa digman. Hallelujah. Amen. Kaya mga kabatid, sa church na ito, Amen. Binabalik natin ang prayer at fasting. Amen. Lalo tayong nananalangin. Nagkakaisa sa pananalangin. Young people, ladies, men, hindi natin pinababayan. Pagkat nakita natin, ito isang bagay na tinatanggal na kaaway. Pagkat alam niya, ito ay isa sa source ng kalakasan ng iglesia. Pero salamat sa Panginoon. Ang captain of the host, nandito siya ngayon. At sabi niya, be sober, be vigilant. Pinapakita niya, in-expose niya ang gawa ng kaaway. At sabi niya, we are not ignorant of the device of the devil pagkat ang salita ng Diyos ini-expose niya ang pamamaraan ng kaaway. Hallelujah! Umangkat kami ng last Wednesday kina ni Barrio Cromel sa Baguio sa midweek service nila at nagsalita si Barrio Joey sabi niya, Pastor, pati kami rito. Amen. Every Friday nagpe-prayer at fasting kami. Amen. Kaya nakikita ko mga kapatid. Amen. Nagkakamot ng ulo si Satanas. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Pagkat mga kapatid, once na kapag iglesia, amen, ay punong-puno ng panalangin at punong-puno ng salita ng Panginoon at punong-puno ng Espiritu Santo ng Panginoon. Hallelujah. Hindi tayo matatalo sa digman. Magwawagi tayo. Bakit ayaw ng kaaway that we would live a consecrated life? Because once the vessel is consecrated, the glory of the Lord will fill that vessel. Ayaw yan ng kaaway. Pero the enemy has been exposed. Amen. The word of God has exposed the enemy. Salamat sa Panginoon. It had become relaxed and was drifting Already the age was backsliding. It had left its first love. Ayan mga kapatid, kapag nag-relax ka, mawala na yung first love mo. Di ba? Kung dating ikaw prayerful, sabi mo, uh, hindi mo na ako manalangin ngayon, mamaya, dalawang araw ka na hindi na nalalangin. Tatlong araw ka na hindi na nalalangin. Kung minsan, one week nang nakalipas, hindi mo na malahin, hindi ka pa na nalalangin. Why? Because you are not watchful. Amen. You become relaxed. Kaya maraming kristyano na wala na yung first love nila. Pero itong panahon ng pagbabalik ng unang pag-ibig sa Diyos. 
Now, at sabi nito, the tiny seed planted in the Ephesian age would one day grow in the spirit of error until all foul birds of the air would roost in its branches. Oh my. Once you become relaxed, you become less watchful. Anong gagawin mo? Yung mga foul spirit, bad spirit, would, he sta- would he start to rest on you in your branches. So inoffensive to human reasoning would that little plant appear to that new Eve, the new church, that again she should be deceived by Satan. Kung papaano yung first Eve na deceived ng serpent, ngayon, yung new Eve, the church, the new church, would be deceived by Satan. The Ephesian age had presented to her the opportunity for God's best. And for a while, she prevailed. And then, relax. Ayun ang again, naging problema. For a while, she prevailed. For a while, she lived victoriously. For a while, she was winning the battles. And then, relax. And in that unguarded moment, Satan planted the seed of complete ruination. In that unguarded moment, when men slept, the enemy came in. Mga kapatid, don't leave yourself unguarded. You've got to be vigilant. You've got to be sober. Kinakailangan lagi kang nagbabantay. Because in that unguarded moment, kung hindi mo binabantayan ang Christian life mo, hindi mo namamalhayan, nawawala na yung first love mo, nawawala ka na ng gana na dumalo sa gawain ng Panginoon, nawawala ka na ng gana na dumalo sa prayer meeting, nawawala ka na ng gana na magsakripisyo para sa gawain ng Panginoon. Akala mo normal na lang yun, pero hindi mo napapansin, you have left your first love because you been relaxed. Mga kapatid, we are not in a picnic, we are in a battle. Kinakailangan alert ka lagi sa ginagawa ng kaaway. You've got to redeem the time because the days are evil. Ayan ang nangyayari sa maraming kristyano ngayon. I'd like to read two more scriptures then we'll end. James 1. Verse 13. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. Hindi pwedeng matukso ang Diyos na gumawa ng masama. At hindi niya rin tayo pwedeng tuksohin na gumawa ng masama. Pagkat it is against his nature. Are you catching that? Verse 14, But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Anong sabi ng mga Philistines kay Delilah? Enticed him. Okay? At si Samson, he was not sober, he was not vigilant. Ini-entice siya ng, ni Delilah pero hindi niya alam. Di ba? Those lion Philistines already surrounded the house. Walang kamalay-malay si Samson. Why? Because Samson was desensitized by Delilah. Every man is tempted when he is drawn away in his own lust and enticed. Ang ibig sabihin, he give in to that temptation. He is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Kaya sabi kanina natin binasa, make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the desires thereof. Then when the, la- when the lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. 
and seen when it is finished, bring it forth death. Do you see the progression from temptation to last? And when last conceive it, bring it forth sin, then sin to death. And we have to be watchful on that. Now, tina natin ito sa chapter 4. Same book, James 4. James 4 verse 4. Ye adulterers, and adulteresses. Know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Do you see this? Friendship of the world is an enmity with God. You could not be the friend of the world and the friend of God at the same time. No! No! If you make friendship with the world, that means you are enemy of God. And if you make friendship with God, it means you are enemy of the world. You could not have the world and God na kaibigan mong sabay. Hindi pwede mga kabatid. Mga kabatid, if the world is your friend, you cut off that friendship for you to be a friend of God. You see that? So if you love the world, if the world is your friend, you are an enemy of God. Verse 7. Let's jump it. Submit yourself therefore to God. You, you must learn to submit yourself. Then Sabito, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Buddy, we've got to resist the devil. Marami mga Christian relax na hindi lang nila nire-resist. Kapag dumada, dumadaan ng kaaway, kapag umatake ng kaaway, hindi nila nire-resist mga kapatid. Pag malayo pa lang kaaway, resist mo na. ba? Ilabas mo na yung sword mo. Now, nauna yung submit bago yung resist. Di ba? You have first to submit yourself therefore to God bago mo i-resist yung devil. Because if you are living a life of disobedience, if you resist the devil, the devil will not flee. Are you catching that? But if you submit yourself to God, the power of God is resting upon you. The presence of God is resting upon you. If you submit yourself to God, parang si Samson, when he is submitting himself to his Nazarite ship, the power of God is resting upon Samson. So if he resists the Philistines, matatalo niya yung Philistines. Sa so unang anong unang gawin natin, we have to submit ourselves to God, then resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Why? Pagkat madadama ng kaaway na merong supernatural strength na nasa iyo because of your obedience to the word. Hallelujah! Kaya the more you yield yourself to God, amen, the more you would have this power to resist the devil. When you resist the devil, the devil has no other choice but to run. Mga kapatid, sinasabi ko, our submission is the key to our victory. Amen. As we submit ourselves to God, as we walk a life in obedience to His Word, brothers and sisters, you could resist as many devils you can. They have to flee. Why? Because they have to recognize that there is a divine strength resting upon you. Pero may marami mga tao sa, may, 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 may mga tao, they don't live a life in submission to the word and they try to resist the devil, the devil will just laugh at them. The devil will not listen to them. Pero mga kapatid, there's power in obedience. There's power in submission. The secret of Samson's strength is his submission to the word. Amen. 
Mga kapatid, let us submit to the word and resist the devil. The devil has got to flee. Kaya ang ating title ngayon, Don't be ignorant of Satan's devices. Nakita natin that there is a danger of being asleep when the enemy is planning for your destruction. We've got always to have this conscious state of mind. Kina kailangan sober tayo, alert tayo. Tandaan natin, araw-araw ay digmaan. Paggising mo pa lang sa umaga, alam mo yung digmaan. Kaya bago ka pumunta sa trabaho, nananalangin ka na. Hallelujah. Amen. Sinusuguro mo na nakaplug ka doon sa source ng kalakasan mo. Amen. Don't allow the devil to desensitize you. Diba? When the devil could put the people to sleep, they are on the road to destruction. Kaya mga kapatid, let us be sober, let us be vigilant, and let us resist the devil. Ayan ang nais ng Panginoon sa atin. Mga kapatid, I believe that this is the time to live a victorious life. Tandaan nyo, greater is He that is in us. The Lord has given us all the resources that we need to live a victorious life. Amen. If we are living a life of defeat, we better check ourselves. Amen. The devil might have desensitized you. Mga kapatid, this is the time na yung unang pag-ibig sa Panginoon ay maibalik. Ang isang tao, nandyan yung unang pag-ibig, madaling magsakripisyo para sa gawain ng Diyos. Walang mahirap basta gawain ng Panginoon. Basta para sa Diyos, walang excuses. Why, mga kapatid, pagkat nandun ang first love mo, o yung mga na, na first love sa Panginoon, alam nila yan, kahit malayo, mga kapatid, kung walang pambasahin, lalakarin nila yan. Kasi first love sila sa Panginoon. Kung walang masakyan, gagawan nila ng parang para lalaman makadalo sa gawain ng Panginoon. Kahit umuulan, dadalo sila. Kahit mahirap, dadalo sila. Why? Pagkat first love sila, ayaw nilang mawala yung first love. Ganyan ang Ephesus, nandun sa una, nandun yung first love, pero naging relax sila. Ano nangyari? Nawala yung first love. Mga kapatid, huwag tayo maging relax bilang buhay kristyano. Kinakailangan, lagi kang mainit sa paglilingkod sa Panginoon. Lagi kang mainit sa pananalangin sa Panginoon. Lagi kang mainit sa gawain sa Panginoon. Sa pa sa Panginoon, mga kapatid, pagkat ang age natin, it's the age of lukewarmness. Lukewarm na sila. Pag sinabing lukewarm, hindi talaga malamig at hindi rin mainit. Nasa gitna lang. <laughs> Amen. Kaya dumadalo pa rin niya sa church, pero wala nang apoy sa puso. Amen. Meron na, nandyan pa rin yung form of godliness, pero wala nang dynamics. Wala na yung power. Amen. The power of God is no longer resting on them. Pero ayaw ng Panginoon niyang lukewarm condition. Sabi niya, Amen. Because thou art lukewarm, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Ang nice ng Panginoon, yung mainit sa paglilingkod sa Panginoon, yung umaapoy sa paglilingkod sa Panginoon. Pagkat ang isang tao na mainit sa Panginoon, isang tao na first love sa Panginoon, may pagsubok man yan, mga kabatid, makikita mo pa rin yan sa gawain ng Panginoon. Amen. May problema man yan, masigasig pa rin sa gawain ng Panginoon. Why? Amen. Pagkat he is not living a relaxed Christian life, mainit siya. Amen. Sober siya, vigilant siya. Meron siyang discerning of his spirit. Alam niya ang gawain ng kaaway. Hindi siya ignorante. Amen. Sa mga devices ng kaaway, alam niya kapag kumikilos ng kaaway, anong ginagawa niya? Nire-resist niya na yung devil. At yung devil has to flee because the power of God is resting upon that person. Why? Because he is living 
in submission to the will of God because submission is the key to your victory. Amen. Kaya salamat sa Panginoon. Amen. I hope that message helps us all. Amen. Because I'm just showing you keys in the Bible. Amen. For us to live a victorious life. Mga kabatid, don't be relaxed. Ayun ang nangyari sa Ephesus. They become relaxed. They drifted away. They backslid. Diba? Yung paisa-isa lang, kumisa nagiging madalas na. Diba? Uh, Mag-absent ako sa midweek service. Mamaya, naging habit mo na na hindi na dumalo ng midweek service. Pero mga kapatid, kung hindi mo pinagbibigyan ng kaaway, dumadalo ka lagi. Naging habit mo na na dumalo. Pag hindi ka magadulo, parang nababagabag ka. Amen. Pagkat ayan ay habit mo na dumalo ng midweek service. Hindi lang linggo, maging midweek service, nandun ka. Pagkat alam mo, ang salita ng Panginoon ay source na yung strength. Amen. Kaya ka binigyan ng transportation ng Panginoon para gamitin mo sa gawain niya. Hallelujah. Huwag kang maniwala sa kaaway. Pag dumalo ka ng Friday, mahina ka sa Sabado. Hindi sino bang nagbibigay kalakasan sa atin? Panginoon na nagbibigay kalakasan sa atin. Don't be seduced by enticing spirit. Satan is a liar. Ang Diyos ang source ng ating kalakasan. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto you. Be fervent in the spirit. Do the will of God. Magpatuloy kayo sa Panginoon. Amen. We will not give place to the devil. Hallelujah. Kaya nagagalak ako. May mga dito galing pa sa Ordaneta. Malayo pa nag-tricycle para lang dumalo dito. Yung iba galing pa sa Lingayan. Dumalo dito. Kaya yung malalapit, wala silang dahilan para hindi dumalo. Pagkat yung malalayo, dumadalo sila. Eh, hey, mga kapatid, pagkat ito ang panahon na maging mainit tayo sa gawain ng Panginoon. At sinasabi ko sa inyo, kung merong pagkakaisang iglesia, expect greater things. The greater power of God, the greater outpouring of His Spirit would rest upon this assembly. Why? Pagkat hindi natin pinabayaan ang source ng ating strength. Nakaplag lahat tayo sa sakit. Pero anong ginagawa ng kaaway? Dinidiscourage ka. Amen. Oh, eh, matanda ka na. Kinakailangan. Amen. Maaga kang matulog. Mga kapatid, ang Diyos ang nagpapahaba ng buhay ng tao. Ang Diyos ang nagpapagaling ng karamdaman. Mga kapatid, sa buong linggo, marami tayong oras sa Panginoon sa ating sarili. Kunti lamang ang inihingi ng Panginoon sa atin. Kinakailangan, maibigay natin yan sa Panginoon. At kung tayo'y tapat sa malilit na bagay, Amen, pagkakatiwalaan din tayo ng Panginoon sa malalaking bahay, bagay. Amen, puri ng Panginoon. Amen. Kung nasa Maynila ka, ma- maunawaan ko kung nagla-livestream ka ngayong gabi. Pero kung nandito ka lang sa Pangasinan, mga kabatid, meron ka pang sasakyan, hindi ka magadalo, hindi ko lubos maunawaan. Why, mga kabatid? Pinagpala ka naman, binigyan ka ng sasakyan ng Panginoon. Amen. Yung iba malayo pa. Amen. Nakakadalo. Kaya hindi pwedeng dahilan niya, mga kabatid. Amen. Nice ng Panginoon. Mainit tayo sa gawain ng Panginoon. Don't you listen to that enticing spirit? Enticing spirit yan yan. Bukas may pasok ka, maaga ka. Eh, pag dumalo ka dyan, mapuyat ka. Pagod ka na. Sinungaling sa tanas. Amen. Kayang ibalik ng Panginoon yung kalakasan na nawala dahil sa sakripisyo mo sa Panginoon. Pero, ang mga kaaway, because of lack of discernment, naiisaan sila ng kaaway. Pero sinasabi ko, we are not ignorant of the devices of the devil because the devil has been exposed. Kaya mga kapatid, galit na galit ang kaaway sa Mount Zion Tabernakal pagkat ini-expose natin ang gawa ng kaaway dito. Hallelujah! Amen! 
kapag naiisa niya yung mga kapatiran, ini-expose natin para mga kapatid yung mga natutulog na kapatiran. Amen. Nasa state of unconscious uh, un uh, unconscious state of mind. Hindi nila napapansin na ginagawa na na-attake na pala sa kana sila ng kawal. Ngayon, ginigising sila mga kapatid. It's high time to wake up thou that sleepest. Kinakailangan lahat tayo gising. Lahat tayo conscious. Lahat tayo sober. Lahat tayo vigilant. Subukan mo mga kabatid pabayaan yung pagdalo sa gawain na pag sinasabi ko, manghihina ka. Subukan mo pabayaan yung prayer life. Oh. Sinasabi ko sa iyo mga kabatid, you will be a powerless Christian. At ayan ang gustong gawin ng kaaway. Kaya isa sa bagay na mahirap gawin, manalangin. Pagkat kapag ikay nanalangin, all devil is against you. Pagkat alam niya, ayan yung source ng strength mo. Kaya gusto niya putulin sa iyong buhay. Pero mga kabatid, amen, hindi tayo papayag. Alam natin ang gawa ng kaaway. Alam natin ang pagkilos ng kaaway. Pagkat ang salita ng Diyos, hindi nagkukulang para palalahanan tayo sa mga bagay-bagay. Amen. Kaya mga kabatid, nagpapasalamat ako. Bagamat hindi man kumpleto, nag increase yung attendance natin every Friday. Maging every Tuesday. Ipagpatuloy nyo mga kabatid. And encourage other members of this church. Hallelujah. Nagawin ang inyong ginagawa. Pagkat ang Diyos ay nalulugod. Which much sacrifice, God is being delighted. Amen. Pagkat yung ginagawa natin, ito'y lamang ay maliit kumpara sa kaluwalatihan na inihanda ng Panginoon para sa atin. Amen. May problema ka ba na praise the Lord pa rin. Amen. Amen. Nothing can stop us. Amen. Because we know the will of God. Amen. Understanding the will of God. Walking in the will of God. Purihin ng Panginoon. Tayo po lahat ay tumayo. Musicians, please come. Amen. Praise the Lord. And salamat sa Panginoon. Amen. Bakit hindi tayo sumundaling manalangin before we sing a song? Let us bow our heads in prayer. Lord Jesus, I believe, Lord, that you want us to have an overcoming life. As the prophet said, Lord, how shall we overcome? To overcome means to know our enemy, to know our enemy and all his schemes. And once the enemy is exposed, Lord, he's howling. Pagkat alam namin ang kanyang pamamaraan. At salamat sa iyo, Panginoon, pagkat sa magitan ng iyong salita, Lord, pinaalalahanan mo kami sa kahalagan ng Pagiging mapagmatsyag, Panginoon. We have to be sober, we have to be vigilant, and we have to know how to resist the devil. Nakita namin si Samson, Lord, he was not sober, Lord. He was not vigilant. Hindi niya alam, Lord, he's already being snared, trapped by the devil, by his enemy. Lo, wala siyang kamalay-malay. The house was already surrounded by lions, by these Philistine lions, Lord. Pero, Panginoon, hindi niya namamalayan, Panginoon, because he was not vigilant. And the glory left him, Panginoon. The Samson that used to have a victorious life, Lord, became Samson, Panginoon, that was defeated. Lord, we don't want that, Panginoon, na mangyari sa amin. We want to live a life of constant victory. Kaya, Panginoon, we have to guard ourselves. We have to make sure, Panginoon, na aming mga gates ay guarded, Panginoon. Pagkat ang kaaway, Lord, ay tumitingin, nagmamatsyag sa amin, tumitingin siya, Panginoon, ng open door na siya'y makapasok sa amin, Panginoon. And once the devil desensitized us, Panginoon, he was he's able, Lord, to infiltrate and do a great damage, destruction sa aming buhay, Panginoon. 
Pero hindi, na, hindi, hindi kami papayag, Panginoon, sa bagay na yan. Pagkat, Lord, tinuruan mo kami. Kaya pinupuri ka namin, pinasalamatan ka namin sa gabing ito. I know, Lord, that you are our great general teaching us the strategies that we need for this great battle. Kaya, Lord, we give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord.